do it. You scrawled on this video to do it. It's your boy, Daddy Scobar Dreamer. Alright, y'all, we back with another big body banger, you feel me? Listen, today we have a different type of reaction video. So recently on my TikTok Explore page, a lot of like Reddit stories have been coming up. Now, me personally, I didn't know what the heck Reddit was. I've heard Reddit before, but I thought Reddit was like like a whole bunch of like weird anime-ness and, and I don't freaking know what it is. But they ha they've been having these story times pop up on my on my for you page on TikTok, and I've been watching them. They've been very, very entertaining. And I was watching them by myself, but I decided let me watch them with my peoples. You know what I'm saying? So this story time is about this lady, how she lost her husband of 20 years. I'm assuming I don't know what happened. I don't know if he cheated, she cheated. I don't know if she, he died. They both died. I don't know what the heck it is, but we're gonna listen to this story. I'm actually very excited because these stories, these Reddit stories, be super fire. If you know, you know. But I'm about to put y'all on game if y'all don't know about these Reddit stories. You know what I'm saying? But before we hop into the video. Dread.com, you can buy two and third free. You can up, say sub $50. You got the best directs in the game, but you already knew this and you don't need a story time for that. Smash the like button if you're excited for this video. Let's just hop right into this. Damn, music fire. How I almost lost my husband of 20 years due a need for attention and validation from, from another, another man. man. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. How I almost lost my husband of 20 years due a need for attention and validation from another man. I'm they said they said how he she almost. Okay, let's let's just met my husband in 1999. I was 19. He was 24. It was a summer camp as his mother was a running and we both were camp counselors. It was a lust at first sight the moment I laid eyes on him. I knew it would eventually and rather quickly turn to love. But here was this bear of a young man, 6'4", 228 pounds, rock-solid physique, chiseled square jaw, played full back in high school and college. I gotta speed this up because this lady is talking slower than a titty right now. You know what I'm saying? I can't do that. You need to... I need to speed this up. 1.25. Let's go. Cause this little lady, I don't know what ethnicity she is, but she's pissing me off with the way she's sounding. I'm trying I'm trying to I'm trying to listen to the story, not hear you talk stupidly. He was the most gorgeous being I'd ever laid eyes on. We started dating not even a month after the camp ended, and by 2001, we were married. For the next early two decades, he did everything and gave me everything I could ever want. My husband has been the definition of provider and protector. He gave me a life where, if I wanted to quit my job and be a stay-at-home mom for our three children, I could do so and would never miss a step. My income is supplemental as best. I make a good amount, but my husband's take-home dwarfs my own. So how the hell, or more importantly, why the hell did I cheat on him for nine months? Hey, so wait, okay, so, okay, so, okay. Okay, so... This this would be pissing me off when girls cheat on a good guy. This guy's taking good care of her. You know what I'm saying? He gave her a nice home, three kids, and you cheat on him for nine months. Let me hear this story, bro. This would have pissed me off. I'm already knowing. Selfishness. Plain and simple. He's the only man I'd ever been intimate with up until my affair. Sure, he showed me plenty of affection and our sex life was awesome. But I never had my crazy 20s. I felt like... She showed me love and affection because he had to, being my husband. We live in a decent-sized town in South Carolina, but generally ever know someone who knows the next person. You get idea? So the vast majority of people knew that I was O's wife, so I never got the dreaded A-word attention that's where M came into the picture. M worked for my company with one of the Northeast offices. My company was doing an aggressive expansion in the South region, and he was moved to my office around June 2019. His main task was to facilitate transitional expansion and train who was ultimately going to be his position in the region, me. M was to the polar opposite of my husband. My husband is a big rugged outdoors man. He power lifts, is covered with tattoos, and has long hair and a big bushy beard, but is soft-spoken. Not introvert, but not bustful. He's a pious humble man. Emma Slender, dresses in designer names, drove an ODRS5 and was a very outspoken and headstrong. 
He also had a silver tongue, and I admit, I feel for it. Naturally, we work quite closely, and M would pay me all kinds of compliments. It started out work-related, but evolved to subtle compliments of my appearance, and I lapped the attention up. I was smitten by him. He wrapped his tendrils around me, and I was too foolish to resist him. I can find it in him. I began returning his affection because I was hooked on the idea of this clean but pretty boy, showering me with adoration. I had it justified in my mind that I wanted to experience this because it was new and exciting. In hindsight, it was the dumbest reasoning I've ever imagined. By August, it was a full-blown EA, and Halloween 2019 is where it became physical. At a company Halloween party I had went with a few of my friends. Normally, all would come, but he was just three months removed of neck surgery and in no condition to party. So because your husband just had neck surgery and couldn't come party, you decided to clap somebody else? <laughs> so he told me to go on and have a good time. Em and I met the tail end of the party and ended up back at his place. I was fully aware of what was going to happen, and I went ahead with it, thinking only of myself and my own needs. I justified it in my head by saying, this is my experience. My husband began to suspect things Thanksgiving Day. At this point, the fog had completely engulfed me, and I was in contact with them as many times as I could. I'd started to pull away from my husband between October to then, especially since there hadn't been months since we'd been intimate. His surgery considerably hindered his movement. I had stepped outside on my parents' porch, and he followed me outside saying, Whoever it is, tell them you're with your family. They'd gotten pretty annoyed with how much I was checking my phone and sending texts, and I'd lied to him, telling him it was one of the younger girls in my team who had recently broken up with her boyfriend and was going to be alone for the holidays. He presses me over his issue with it on the way home, and after we put the kids to bed, and I snapped at him. So now for the first time in really our entire marriage, there was a hint or resentment between us, and in hindsight, I'm disgusted with how I treated him. I must have been out of my fucking mind. Fast forward to May 2020, when everything went south. I was now working remotely due to COVID, and my husband was now back working having been cleared by his doctor in March. Due to the fact that a lot of the guys at his work were furloughed, he had to pull 10 to 12 days, sometimes 4 days a week. The kid would do their homeschooling, then either go to their friend's house one street down or to my husband's parents' house. They are very close to their grandparents, both mine and O's. This would give me several hours in the house alone. And you guessed it? I invited him over. Happened several times over the spring, but a one day in late May is one I dread and will never soon forget. I never heard his truck pull up, never heard him enter the house or come up the stairs. Always a mountain of a man, so normally you know exactly where he is in the house by the sound of his footsteps. Em and I were right smack in the middle of it when I noticed I was standing in the doorway with his phone out. It's the single darkest and most embarrassing moment of my life. Even recalling it now makes me sick to my stomach and teary-eyed. I pushed M off me and just stared at O. The only words that I could even master out of my tumbus mouth was, I can explain. Cliche, right? O laughs at me maniacally. And dresses me down before telling me to back up your shit and get the fuck out of my house. He said it with such a ferocity and finality. Where's the video? I want to see the video. I want to see the video because this... They, she, she said that her husband is 6'4", and the other dude was short. Where, where the other dude, why the husband ain't shoot that? Well, I talked about this in my videos. You're not supposed to be mad at the person that they cheated on you with because they ain't really did nothing. But it's her co-worker. He knows her, and he knows that, that he, she has a husband. I don't know. It's a different situation. I would have shot them both, probably. Liddy, that I knew there was a no coming back. I've never heard that level of fury in his voice in 21 years I've known this man. He leaves and closes the door behind him. And the way of what just happened flattens me. All I could do was fall to my knees and scream. M then starts yelling at me also. I really couldn't tell you what he said if I tried. I was in a state of shock. He's screaming at me the whole time while I'm trying to gather whatever stuff I can I would need in the immediate. M had put his stuff on and was adamant about not wanting to leave my bedroom alone because he was afraid my husband would cave his call in. Remember? 
always about two That's times the size of M. Like, he, he I open the door him. and M scurries out of like a scared rodent. I try to approach O and he sternly says, Don't you fucking dare. The words are burnt into my mind. The pure rage in his eyes absolutely shook me to my core. I just wiped my face, picked up my bag, and left. I looked around the house as I left thinking this was the last time I'd ever see it. As it is his house, an inheritance from his grandfather who owned the land and built the house literally with his bare hands. By the time I reached the driveway, Emma was gone, and the keys to my car were back in the house I was no longer welcomed in. I've never felt more alone than that moment. I couldn't call my sister or my parents as I grew up in a super southern conservative home. They'd completely disown me if they knew what I've done, especially since they absolutely adored O. They should disown no you brothers, like that. So always like the son of my father never had. He'd be especially hurt by it. The only person I could call was my best friend Rain, who I've known since grade school. I called and explained to her everything. She offered to come pick me up, but I told her, no, I'd find my own way to her place. The next two days were agonizing. I tried calling and text O every chance I could between crying and getting dressed down by rain for being a total fuck up. I tried calling his parents, but his father told me, the kids are gonna stay here a few days. You need to give O space. He'll reach out on you when he's ready before hanging up on me. So that meant O had told his parents what happened. I began to resign myself to the fact that I was about to become an ex-wife. There's no way I could come back from this. I just ruined a 20-year marriage and broke the heart of the only man I've ever loved because I needed to have a fling. But then... It's not even a fling. You didn't even have a fling. You was clapping the man for nine freaking months. You was consistently flinging your titties all on the man's face. D-Day plus three. Finally, he answered me and told me I could come home. Rain drove me back and upon going inside, was sitting on the couch. Rain sat right beside me as O tears me a new one. In 21 years, he's never so much as a raised his voice at me. And here he was shouting at me for a good 40 minutes to felt. He asked me why I did what I did. And I answered him honestly. I didn't gaslight or lie. I fucked up and I owned it. I'm not ashamed to say I begged on my knees for him not to leave me. He tells me, after all of it, he's not going to file for divorce. But things were about a change and not for the better for me. It appeared he'd spent two days apart from me devising terms of reconciliation, which included me resigning from a job, cutting all contact from M, giving him all of M's contact info so he could monitor M if he tries to contact me himself, and signing a post nap later in the week. There was another stipulation he made that I won't mention because I don't want anyone to think he's a horrible person. He's not. I deserved all I brought upon myself for breaking my vows to him. I expected his terms willingly. Two days later, we met with a family lawyer he had contacted, and I signed a post nap. No lawyer of my own because I wasn't contesting what I did. It's been seven months since, and I do everything and anything I can to try and ease his hurt. And he is hurting. We're doing couples counseling, and I see the therapist two times a week to deal with my own feeling and come to terms with what I did. He puts in a brave face in front of everyone as... The only people who know are us, Rain, his parents, and them. But it tears me to shred seeing how much I wounded him. He was always a jovial, warm-hearted person. It's hard to find that warmth anymore. He tries. He really does. But I broke the spirit with She's what I did. Thought. Thought. And I'm ashamed of myself for it. I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror to the point where I cut my hair and dyed it dark brown. I'm naturally strawberry blonde because I couldn't stand what stared back at me. I don't try to smoother him. I give him space. I watch. If he asks something of me, I do it willingly with no questions asked. The most jarring aspects of this all, aside from the stipulation I don't want to mention, is the fact that he addresses me by my first name. For 20 years, I've been baby doll. Now, I'm just B. That hurts in a way I didn't even anticipate it would. You should be getting called another B word. You little thought, Diana? But I accept it. I deserve it. And if I want to earn my title of a baby doll back, I have to build back his trust in me and restore his manhood. I have to be better than what I was before. He's afforded me a second chance, and I rightly don't deserve. And I refuse to take it, or him for granted. 
Never again will I stray. Never again will I give him reason to lose faith in me. I love my husband to the core of my being. No, you don't. And I will do anything I can within God-given ability to show him that. Today is our 20th anniversary. This morning, while we were eating breakfast with the kids, he kissed me on the lips for the first time since D-Day and said, Happy New Year. My heart melted and I had to excuse myself from the table to go and- I would never kiss that little thought to again. Her mouth is full of another man. You know, kids, children. You, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 you know what I'm saying. The, the toaster strudel stuff. To the guest bathroom and cry. I've never been more overcome with emotion at once in my life. Happiness, sadness, shame, regret. I think I had an anxiety attack, to be honest. A few minutes later, comes into the bathroom and I just run into his arms. I squeeze him as hard as my tiny self can around his waist, bury my face in his chest, and only crying another 10 minutes. He just stands there, his arms wrapped around me and hold me. I truly don't deserve this man. You don't, you're a thought. He's beautiful, kind, warm hearted, spirited, and just a man. Even with how badly I hurt him, he takes care of me. I will never jeopardize losing him ever again. This gotta be the stupidest woman in the entire freaking world. You, this, this is what I be talking about. It's one thing to cheat on a no good nobody. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to cheat on a no good person that doesn't take care of you, doesn't do the things that you want, someone that you don't actually love, somebody that isn't the father of your kids or mother of your kids, whatever the heck it is. But it's another thing to cheat on someone that's doing all of these things. And not even one time. She didn't cheat one time and felt regret. She didn't even, th this is the thing. She didn't. She, she wasn't sorry. She was sorry she got caught because she been doing it for nine effing months. And he took her, that's, that's what baffles me. Nine months and you took her back? After nine months of doing this fool fool After nine months of doing this stupidness? And you took out? Her whole family would, well, actually no, her family was probably cool. You know what I'm saying? Her family was probably cool. She was talking about her family and all that, how their families is all close and that's their second son or whatever, like, or first son, whatever the heck it is. But her... Her? You know what I'm saying? That's this is this is a problem in the society of human races right now. You know what I'm saying? People are just stupid. She doesn't she hasn't thought. She doesn't it just pisses me off that it's people out there that literally do this. After twenty years of being married, you do this foolishness. Three kids in, twenty years of marriage, and you go and clap somebody for nine months straight. Clapping them in his own house. You know what I'm saying? Well, technically your house. But you know what I'm saying? Clapping in your house. You didn't even go to the other dude's house. You did it in your house where you and your husband sleep. Where you and your husband do it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all never know what y'all think in the comments down below. Y'all taking this girl back? I, can, I told you, I'm automatically no. Automatic, automatically no. I, I'll tell God, God to, I'll help God take her back, actually. You know what I'm saying? If you get what I'm saying. Y'all let me know in the comments, would y'all take her back? If you if you 18 years into the marriage and you got three kids, is that enough to make you give her a second chance? And what was that? What was the other stipulation that he didn't want to say that she didn't want to say? What was the other rule that he that she had or that he had for her? I'm curious. If anybody has a guess to it, drop it inside the comments down below. But that's really about it, man. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. If y'all want more of these Reddit videos, I'm probably gonna read them myself. Cause like this lady was this lady was reading so stupidly, she don't even know how the heck to read. So maybe I'll read it on the next one. Y'all let me know in the comments down below what I should do. But that's very about it. I'm gonna see y'all out. Ayo, C3, so fly, hop out the butterfly Wings to the sky, no, I'm never borderline They choose I, cause I'm way above you The waves make the haters love you When the ladies come through